this video, we will show you how to fit the aluminium side rail with ventilation to your polytunnel. Here are the parts you'll need. The aluminium side rail is made up of lengths of aluminium rail, which are 61 centimeters, 1.83 meters, and 3.66 meters. The side rail fixes to the outside of the framework, with the T-slot internally facing. It is attached to the framework using intermediate clamps and corner clamps. We will start by fitting the side rail from the door post to the corner hoop. You will need two pieces of side rail, one piece 61 cm long and one piece 1.83 m long. Join the two pieces together. Slide half of the rail joiner into one piece of the side rail and tighten the screws using the Allen key provided. Then slide the second piece of the side rail onto the rail joiner and tighten the screws. This piece will extend beyond the width of your polytunnel and will be trimmed to size at the end. The 61 cm, 1.83 meter and 3.66 meter lengths will be used down the length of your polytunnel, corner to corner. The side rail should be fitted so it leaves a gap of 75 cm between the top of the base rail and the bottom of the side rail. Make a mark on the top and the bottom of the side rail. Carefully pull to the side to reveal the doorpost and make a mark on the doorpost in line with the T-slot. Use a 9mm wood drill bit to drill a hole through the doorpost. Slide a 90mm M8 bolt into the T-slot and then through the pre-drilled hole. Fix in place using a nut and washer, ensuring the end of the side rail is flush with the inner edge of the doorpost. Fit a corner clamp to the corner hoop. To assemble, place the U-bolt around the corner hoop with the threads pointing to the inside of the polytunnel. Place the tube pressing and then corner clamp onto the threads, ensuring the corner clamp wings run parallel with the width and length of your polytunnel. Secure in place with nuts, finger tight. Slide a 16mm M8 bolt into the T-slot of the rail and through the corner clamp. Secure the side rail to the corner clamp using a nut. Move the corner clamp up or down so that the bottom of the side rail is 75cm above the base rail and firmly tighten the corner clamp nuts. We will now fit the aluminium side rail down the length of your polytunnel. Starting with the 61cm length, slide a 16mm M8 bolt down the T-slot and locate the bolt through the corner clamp. Put the side rail up to the corner side rail and tighten the nut. You will now start to use the 3.66m lengths of side rail. Depending on your length of polytunnel, you may have been supplied with a 1.83m length, which will be used last. Join this length to the previously fitted length using a rail joiner. Slide half of the rail joiner into one piece of the side rail and tighten the screws using the Allen key bit provided. Then slide the second piece of the side rail onto the rail joiner and tighten the screws. To secure the side rail to the intermediate hoop, slide two hexagon bolts from the intermediate clamp down the T-slot of the side rail. Position them at either side of the hoop. Place a curved pressing over the bolts Measure 75 cm up from the side rail and tighten. Repeat this procedure until you reach the end of your polytunnel. The final piece will exceed the length of your polytunnel and we will trim this off at the end. To fit the side rail between the corner hoop and door post on the opposite end of your polytunnel, join a 61 cm piece and 1.83 m piece and hold it in position. You will need to cut to size. Secure it to the corner clamp and door post using the same method described earlier. Where the side rails exceed the width and length of your polytunnel, cut off the excess with a hacksaw. The sawn edges will be sharp. It is important that these are filed smooth before the cover is fitted, for safety and so that they don't damage the polythene cover. If you have ordered aluminium side ventilation for both sides of your polytunnel, repeat this process on the opposite side. The next part of this process is to install the ventilation netting. However, 
it is best to fit the ventilation netting after the polytunnel cover has been fitted. This is because during the process of fitting the cover, the rails are raised, the cover is attached, and then the rails are lowered to add extra tension. Fitting the ventilation before this cover has been fitted will hinder the process and will result in the ventilation netting being baggy. Please watch the video, Fitting Polytunnel Cover to Aluminium Rail, and then return to this section to perform the final bit of your ventilation netting. To fit the ventilation netting, start by rolling it out down the length of your polytunnel and ensure there's enough overhang at either end. The green netting is secured to the side rail using the U and T profiles, which will need cutting to size. Measure and cut a piece of U profile to fit between the door post and corner clamp. Position the netting over the channel and secure in place by pushing the U profile onto the channel. Measure and cut a piece of the T profile to fit between the door post and corner hoop, and then hammer this into place using a rubber mallet. Now work down the length, adding sections of the U profile to secure the ventilation netting to the side rail. Then from the final corner to the door post. Hammer the T profile into place, ensuring it covers any joins in the U profile. Repeat this procedure to secure the ventilation net to the base rail. It is best to start in the centre and work outwards to both ends. Pull the net down while doing so to tension. Using a wooden baton, measure and cut a piece that fits between the base rail and the side rail on the door post. Tension the netting and then secure to the door post using nails. You can now trim off the excess. Repeat this procedure on the opposite side of your polytunnel if you have ordered aluminium side ventilation for both sides. You can find more videos to help you build your polytunnel and construct.firsttunnels.co.uk. We also have a construction helpline if you require any further assistance.